when it feels like God has left you. Isaiah 43 verse 2 When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God made a promise that he will always be there for us, and God will never make a promise that he will not keep. God will always be there, and I want us to know that when we are going through the toughest time, He is there. Friends can leave you, family members can leave you, partners can leave you, but one person who won't is God. There are times when everything will be confusing, Challenges will come and you will pray for help, and it will be like God has left. He said when we go through the fire, when we go through the waters, He will be there. Not that God will be there in heaven looking at us, go through them, but He will enter it with us. He will enter into that situation with us, but oftentimes, we don't feel him because we concentrate too much on the problems. We get beaten down by the challenges we face sometimes and we don't know what to do. But there is one thing we will do when we realize that God is with us. Micah 7 verse 8 Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. This verse of the Bible is from someone who knew he would rise whenever he falls. It is a word of hope and encouragement in the Lord. For anyone to be determined to rise again, it means that a person must have fallen. Even if we are righteous, it doesn't guarantee a life free of falling. Over the years I have learned something about falling. It draws you back, and when you rise by the power of God, you go further. It's like an arrow. When you draw an arrow backwards and release it, the more it goes backwards, the farther it travels when released. When you fall, you may feel like God is not there, but when you open your eyes, you will see God in the situation with you and you will be able to say you will rise again. It doesn't matter what the situation is like, you will always rise. What is called failure is not failing, but failure is failing to rise again. The devil wants you to remain beaten down, but I am telling you today that God has never left you for any time. He is right there with you. You need to call on Him. There are storms on the way. We will have to fight our way through the storms. Challenges and temptation face us daily. Some of us are not that strong to stand it. And this is why the Bible told us to take heed so that we don't fall. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12 So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. It's not by ourselves that we will stand against storms and temptations, so as not to fall, but by the power of God. To every rise, there must have been a fall. Failure is part of life. We can't take away that fact. If we want to be exceptional in what we do, one thing must differentiate us from others, and that should be the ability not to give up. A warrior cannot be called a warrior if there is no battle. A conqueror will not be called a conqueror if he or she gives up. 
Trying to achieve something may attract failure, but should we, for the sake of failure, choose to be blind to the bright future? Philippians 3 verse 19 I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is what we should follow too. God started well with you, he is in the process of making you and building you. The failure is part of the process, it doesn't define you, it is for you to value success when it comes. God will always end his works on you and never leave you incomplete. What should you do when it feels like God is not with you? Number one, have a closer relationship with God. We all need someone we can trust, someone that will always be there for us when we are down. Although we can find some of our loved ones to fill in this gap, as a human being, they can fail us someday. They might not be there every time. There is a kind of drawback to all these types of relationships, and when this happens, it may lead to a lack of trust or breakups. This is why we need a pure friendship, a perfect relationship. Going into a relationship means you are ready to give everything to your partner. You share the same secret, same burden, and the same challenges. Jesus is always there to carry our burden. Psalm 55 verse 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. It has not been documented that the Lord has failed someone before. Those who are in a relationship with Jesus has it all. 1 John 5 verse 12, whoever has the Son has life. What can be more important than having a life? Having a life in Christ means you are having full security and blessing. God made it clear to Abraham that if he walks before him, he would be blessed. Genesis 17 verse 1 and 2 Then I will make my covenant between me and you, and will greatly increase your numbers. One of the ways we can build a strong relationship with God is through His Word. God talks in diverse ways. He could decide to communicate with you through the Scriptures. To be able to get the Word of God from the Scriptures is through the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised He will send Him to help us understand things, and He will help us to get the voice of God from the Scriptures. Psalm 37 verse 4 Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. This is the major reason why we should read the Bible, why we should study it daily. If you desire to have a closer relationship with the Lord, you want to know what He is capable of doing. You want to be strengthened, and stay focused on Him, not minding what the situation is. Pick up the Bible and study it. The Bible reveals who God is and how we can approach Him. It opens you to the promises He has made. If not for the Scriptures, we can never know that God is a loving God who wants us to come to Him for safety. 2. Let God drive your life Every car has its control. It would not be possible to drive a car if the control is not present. Consider a new car that has no problem. The number of days or years the car will be used depends on the one who controls the car. If an amateur driver handles the car, there might be an accident and the car would be damaged. If a professional handles the car, it would work fine and no damages will occur soon. Our lives are like the car. We need someone to be the driver. 
we can choose to be the one driving our lives ourselves, we can also let someone else handle our lives. The distance our lives can go and the achievements that will come to us will depend on the driver. One question you should ask yourself now is, who is controlling my life? This question is not rhetorical. It needs an answer. In this life, we face different challenges, things that can make us think of giving up. But if we let God take control of our lives, if we give everything to Him, He will give us the best solution to our problems. We don't have to feel bad or look like there is no hope anywhere when we can easily go to God and allow Him to make His good plans come to pass in our lives. Psalm 121 shows that God doesn't leave. He stays with us. Amid storms coming in the form of challenges, who are you relying on? There are things that we want to achieve in our lives. We have plans, and we believe they will come to pass. But have we considered the plans of God for our lives? Are we asking for the right thing, or are we even asking at all? All these questions are to help us examine our lives and know how we can move closer to God so that He can take control of our lives. The plans God has for us are good. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Why should we then go into another source or go and depend on another unreliable source for achievements? The mistake mankind makes is allowing themselves to be the driver of their lives. We don't know anything. We are very limited. We cannot compare ourselves with God. We don't know what will happen an hour from now, let alone a week from now. But God does. God knows. Allow him to drive your life. Jesus was talking to his disciples about what they will face on earth. Jesus did not lie to them to comfort them, but he told them the truth about life. Life is full of evil. It is full of challenges, things that can make one lose hope and never remember Jesus. Jesus told them not to be afraid. John 16 verse 33 these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Many people want to depend on the Lord for everything. They are willing to let Him take control of their lives, but they don't know how to. How then do you depend on God and let Him control your life? 3. Surrender your life to Him. God is the greatest. No one is greater. He knows everything about you, even before you were born. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. If God knows everything about you, he will know what's the best for you and what will make you great. He knows what will make you overcome the challenges you are facing in your life, and He will give you peace. The best thing to do now is to surrender everything to Him. There should not be anything like partial submission. Everything about our lives, every area of our lives should be submitted to God, and He will make us great. If God controls our lives, everything about us will be different. People will see the works of God in our lives. This will also attract people to serve God. We have to start thinking about following the Word of God. We have to start calling on God to control our lives. We need to start having the conviction that God is always with us. Jacob was at a place and he did not even know that the Lord was there. You need to be in spirit all the time to see that God is always with you, even when things become unbearable. That is the truth, 
and he will never leave you alone, nor forsake you. <laughs>